In this video, we shall solve the Schrödinger equation for an electron orbiting around a positive charged motionless proton, that of the problem of a hydrogen atom. We shall derive the explicit form of the electron wave function, or the so-called atomic orbitals, and will also visualize the shapes of these orbitals. We shall also obtain their discrete energy levels, and discuss how the transitions between these discrete levels give rise to the emission spectra as described by the Rydberg formula. Let's begin. The potential energy of the electron, electrostatically bound to positively charged proton, is given by the Coulomb's law as shown. The energy scales inversely with their distance, r, and is negative because the force is attractive. Classically, we would expect that the electron would simply fall into the center of the proton. In quantum mechanics, this is not the case, as we shall see in this video. We begin with the Schrödinger equation. We are interested with central potential, v, for which v is a function only of the distance from the origin, given by the radial coordinate r. The rotational symmetry of the hydrogen problem implies that the wave function would have a spherical harmonics part. Please refer to our previous video on discussion about spherical harmonics. We can express our wave function as function of the spherical coordinates, and the Laplacian in the Schrödinger equation is as shown. We shall begin with looking for solution that are separable into products of functions, r and y, where, r, is only a function of r, and y is only a function of theta and phi. We shall insert this new separable form of the wave function into the Schrödinger equation. After some manipulation and dividing the equation throughout by the wave function, and multiplying by the constant minus 2 r m square divided by h bar square, we obtain the following as shown. We see that the expressions within the first square bracket depends only on the coordinate r, while the expressions in the second square bracket depends on theta and phi only. Hence, these two expressions must each be a constant for the equality to be satisfied. We shall let the constant be L multiply by L plus 1, for reason that will become apparent later. The first equation is the radial equation, which depends on the Coulomb potential energy term, whose solutions will be presented in this video. The second equation is the angular equation, whose solutions give us the spherical harmonics, y, which we have already presented in a previous video. For your convenience, we show here again the explicit expressions of the spherical harmonics function y for l equals to 0, 1 and 2, as we shall see later when we solve for the hydrogen atom. These are the l states that are most relevant. For each index l, we access only m from minus l to plus l. Thus, for l equals to 0, we have only m equals to 0. For l equals to 1, we have m of minus 1, 0 and plus 1. For l equals to 2, we have m equals to minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1 and 2. Thus, 1 spherical harmonics for l equals 0, 3 spherical harmonics for l equals 1, and 5 spherical harmonics for l equals 2. We see that these spherical harmonics are complex functions due to the complex exponential functions. Now, back to the radial equation. Our first task is to tidy up this equation. We define a new function, u, as a product of the radial coordinate r, and the function r. Substituting this new function, u, into the radial equation, we arrive at a new second-order differential equation for the function u. We see that this new radial equation has the same form as the Schrödinger equation, if we define a new effective potential as shown. Thus, this amounts to solving a one-dimensional Schrödinger equation. Of course, this can be solved very easily numerically. Luckily, it is also possible to solve this radial equation analytically. In this video, we shall not be bogged down with the math of deriving its solutions, as this can be found in most textbooks. Instead, we will just present its solutions, and discuss the form and shape of these wave functions. First, we note that the energies are discrete, 
and are denoted by the quantum number n. The wave functions u depends on the quantum number l and n. We first define the Bohr radius, defined as shown in terms of universal constants. It is about half an angstrom. We also define a dimensional radius, ρ, for the n energy level. The eigenenergy, En, is given as follows, where n is an integer that runs from 1, 2, and so on. This is also known as the Bohr formula, first proposed by Niel Bohr before quantum mechanics or Schrödinger equation even existed. The eigenfunction is given as follows, in terms of the associated Laguerre polynomials and the Laguerre polynomials. The eigenfunction, u, are labeled by the quantum numbers n and l, where l runs from 0, 1, 2 to n minus 1. Do not be scared by these mathematical expressions. We will clean them up substantially in what follows. As the name implies, the Laguerre polynomials are just polynomials. We list the first half dozen of these polynomials here. You do not need to worry about these. I just list them here for your convenience. Remember, the slides can be downloaded from the YouTube description link below. The associated Laguerre polynomials are also listed here, for the first dozen that we will be using in this video. As you see, these are very simple polynomial functions. The radial wave functions, r, can be obtained from the function u. We list here the radial functions associated with the first, second and third energy levels, denoted by n equals to 1, 2 and 3, as shown. The subscript for r contains two numbers, the quantum number n and l. For n equals 1, we have only one radial function with l equals 0. For n equals 2, we have two radial functions with l equals 0 and 1. For n equals 3, we have three radial functions with l equals 0, 1 and 2. Let's plot these radial functions. Here, we plot the radial functions for n equals 1 and 2. For the radial function r1, 0, as given by the red curve, it has maximum at r equals to 0, and decays exponentially with r. In other words, this wave function yields the largest probability of finding electron at the center of the proton, but with finite probability elsewhere outside the proton. For the radial function r2, 0, it also has the maximum at r equals 0. It decreases with r, then goes negative, and slowly converge asymptotically to 0. Hence, it intercepts the x-axis once. We call the number of nodes as the number of times it crosses the x-axis, which in this case is 1. In fact, there is a simple formula that tells us what the number of nodes should be, given by n minus l minus 1. The radial function r2 1, on the other hand, has zero probability at r equals 0. Thus, we see that the electron is not always at the center of the proton, as what one would expect classically. We can also similarly plot the radial functions for the n equals 3 case. We have the functions r3 0, r3 1, and r3 2. Again, one can count the number of nodes and check that it is consistent with the formula as given. Qualitatively speaking, we see that the higher the index L, the more the wave functions spread out away from the center of the proton, out to larger r. All right. How about the eigenenergies? The energy spectrum of the electron and the hydrogen atom is given by the Bohr formula, and we plot here for energies corresponding to n equals to 1 to 7. The energy spacing decreases with increasing n. Electrons in the hydrogen atom can occupy any of these discrete energy levels. They transition from lower to higher energy level by absorbing a photon, and vice versa by emitting a photon. The latter leads to distinct emission spectra for the hydrogen gas which we have seen in previous videos. These emission spectra are described by different transition series. For example, 
the Lyman series described transitions from energy levels with n larger than 1 to n equals to 1. The Balmer series described transitions from energy levels with n larger than 2 to n equals to 2. And so on. Photons with wavelength lambda will be emitted when electrons descend from a higher energy level, EI, to a lower energy level, EF. Lambda can be derived easily from the Bohr formula as shown in the orange box. The constant factor, R, is called the Rydberg constant, and the formula is highlighted in called the Rydberg formula. The complete electron wave function is then given by the product of the radial function, R, with the spherical harmonics, Y. There will be a normalization constant for the function R, which we denote as C, whose expression is given in blue. The wave function is complex, since the spherical harmonics Y is complex. The atomic orbital wave function are indexed by three quantum numbers, N, L and M. These wave functions are mutually orthogonal. In other words, their overlap with one another is zero unless the three quantum numbers N, L, M are equal to N prime, L prime and M prime respectively. However, through linear combinations of the complex spherical harmonics, we can construct a new set of real spherical harmonics. We have discussed how to construct real spherical harmonics in a previous video on spherical harmonics. In what follows, we shall discuss our visualization of these wave functions. Before we proceed with the visualization of the orbital wave functions, let's remind ourselves again how the quantum numbers n, l and m are ordered. The quantum number n runs from 1, 2, 3 and so on. For each n, we have the quantum number l that runs from 0 to n minus 1. Lastly, for each l, we have the quantum number m that runs from minus l to plus l. Here, we also adopt the common convention, and denote the l equals to 0 orbital as s, the l equals to 1 orbital as p, and the l equals to 2 orbital as d. With a bit of reordering, we arrive at the new table. For n equals to 1, we have only 1 s orbital. For n equals to 2, we have 1 s orbital and 3 p orbitals. For n equals 3, we have 1 s orbital, 3 p orbitals, and 5 d orbitals. In what follows, we shall visualize these different atomic orbitals. Let's start with the n equals to 1, which is only 1 s orbital. In this case, the complex and real wave function has exactly the same form as shown. It is maximum at the center of the atom, and decays exponentially with r, as depicted in the image below. Next, let's proceed to the n equals to 2. In this case, we have total of 4 orbitals, 1 s orbital, and 3 p orbitals. In this case, the wave functions are in general complex. For the complex wave function, we plot instead the probability density, which is modulus square of the wave function. This is shown in the red intensity figure, where the brightness denote the magnitude of the probability. We see a large electron density in the core, and also has a finite probability at some annulus ring. In between, the electron density is zero. This is a result of the fact that the radial wave function has a node. We can also plot the real wave function, denoted by psi tilde. Here, the sign of the real wave function is denoted by the two colors. Next, we look at the pz orbital. It has a shape that like its real spherical harmonics we discussed in last video. It has two lobes with the lobe axis pointing along the z direction. Lastly, we visualize the px and py orbitals. The real wave functions are like the pz orbital, except that the lobe axis are now pointing along x and y respectively. On the other hand, the modulus square of the complex wave functions px and py are equal and is a torus shape lying on the xy plane. Finally, let's look at the n equals to 3 case. We start with the s orbital. Here, 
we see there are a total of two nodes along the radial direction, consistent with what we expect from the radial wave function. For the PZ orbital, we see a doubling of the number of lobes to 4. The number of nodes along the radial direction is 1, consistent with the radial wave function. For the PY and PX real orbitals, they are similar, except that the lobe axis are pointing along the Y and X axis respectively. The probability density, on the other hand, are equal, and has the shape of an inner torus, and an outer torus. In essence, we see that these orbitals in the n equals to 3 is quite similar to that for the n equals to 2 case, except with the appearance of an additional nodal structure along the radial direction. Finally, for the d orbital, or the l equals to 2 state. Consider first the m equals to 0 orbital, or the dz2 orbital. It has a shape as shown, with a double lobe pointing along z-axis, and a torus in the xy plane. For the m equals to plus and minus 1d orbitals, the real orbitals consists of four lobes, residing on the yz plane or the xz plane. Thus, the former is called the dyz orbital, and the latter the dxz orbital. Lastly, we have the m equals to plus and minus 2d orbitals, the real orbitals consisting of four lobes, residing on the xy plane. They are called the dxy and dx2, y2 orbitals. Note that the probability density of these two orbitals are the same, with a torus-like shape on the xy plane. So, we see that electrons in a hydrogen atom does not just collapse into the center of the proton, and has unique orbital shapes characterized by the set of trio quantum numbers. The wave function's shapes are to a large extent described by their spherical harmonics, but modulated by the radial wave function, giving it the extra nodal structure for various n. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes. Join our Free Science Academy Discord channel to discuss science and technology. High school students are welcome to join and post your questions, we will answer them during our free time.